Good morning. Wanted to uh, just show you the latest thing that I'm looking to add to uh, the Garage Door project, and that is a little video display. Uh, I started work on uh, some buttons, and I wanted to uh, have some controls that would enable me to uh, open and close the garage door to set the distance uh, for the car and the distance of the garage. And as I started doing that, uh, I realized that what would make the user experience much better would be to have a uh, an actual uh, display. So I went out and I went looking uh, for a display and uh, I found this ST7565 on Adafruit. And so what I wanted to, to do was to grab this and use it in the garage door project. Now this is a nice little uh, RGB backlight uh, display. Comes in a monochrome version. Uh, I chose the RGB one because I thought what I could do would be to mirror the display of the parking lights on the LCD. So as I can control the, the parking lights moving forward, back, that sort of thing, I can also have the display do it, uh, do it on uh, uh, the control unit. So I went looking around and I picked this one because it's actually a serial uh, connected device. And that means that I don't need uh, eight or 16 you know, connections directly into the, uh, the Galileo <coughs> to uh, uh, go and, and drive this. So I went and bought this and uh, Adafruit's a great uh, site. They have uh, a bunch of tutorials on how to use their uh, application, or how to use their components. And so I went over to the LCD tutorial and started looking at uh, uh, what I needed to do. And one of the first things that I needed to do was to go grab the source code. So I did that. I went over to the GitHub, grabbed the source code, cloned it down to uh, my machine. And then I started looking at, okay, uh, how am I going to make this uh, this work? Well, if we go back to the tutorial, you can see that uh, it has information on how to wire it up. Now, this is a tutorial for the monochrome LCD, and you can see that because it only has the two wires for the LED. There'll be more wires for the uh, for the RGB version, but fundamentally, the basic driver wires are exactly the same. So, I was uh, looking at this and uh, looking at the the LED display, and uh, uh, it's a 3.3 volt device. So the Galileo is a 5 volt uh, microcontroller. So I had to hook it up in such a way that uh, I could work in 3.3 volts. So what I did uh, initially was grab uh, the 3.3 volt, and here you can see it on the Galileo. I grabbed it from the Galileo, took it into uh, the breadboard, and I'm sharing that 3.3 volt with the uh, uh, the display, as well as this little integrated circuit here, and this is a 4050 uh, level shifter. The 4050 level shifter uh, is a nice little chip. You can see it here. It basically uh, enables you to put uh, the output voltage that you wish to have on pin one, and then when you feed in a signal uh, at whatever voltage, I believe it's from 3 to 20 volts, it will actually make sure that the output voltage matches uh, the voltage on pin one. And it does this without inverting it, so there's no change to the signal, no additional electronics required. Uh, I can just simply take that straight through and do that. So if we look at the implementation, you can see that I have my pins coming from the Galileo over to the, the chip, and then I take each one of those back out over here to the, the display. So now that I had it hooked up, uh, I needed to get the code running. So in that, um, in that sample code from uh, uh, the Adafruit GitHub, they had an example application. And this example application basically goes and displays a, a bunch of uh, things like a splash screen and some lines and rectangles and, and so on. And so I copy that across into Visual Studio uh, into a Galileo wiring uh, application or template and then I compiled it, and I got a bunch of errors, which is what I was expecting. Now, the <clears throat> first major error that I got was that uh, uh, there's not a bunch of the functions weren't uh, um, declared. 
beforehand, so I just copied them and stuck them at the top of the file here. And uh, then I had to start uh, looking at how uh, some of the functions that are being called in the library work. Now, the first one I noticed was the difference between random and srandom. Uh, the Visual C++ has that as rand and srand. Uh, then I needed to go in, and because I've plugged this into different pins, then the example I had to update uh, that. And then uh, the final change that I had to make was to this free RAM uh, function here, which goes in and uh, utilizes some GCC-specific stuff, I think, uh, this BSS end and, and so on, uh, to work out how much memory is available. I'm not really using it. Uh, this is a demo, so I just return zero. Apart from that, there's no other changes to this code. So now I could compile this code I started to look at the actual implementation of the library to drive um, the 7565. So if we have a look at that library, you can see here uh, that it's a, a file that has a bunch of information in it. And basically, the only changes I needed to do were around uh, the include files. We don't have in the Galileo, we don't have access to the AVR and the util stuff. So what I had to do was say, well, when you're utilizing a, a Galileo app, you want to use the uh, wiring on Windows Arduino.h header file, and I need to use standard lib to provide some functions that would have been called in here. Now, there's not a great way of saying initially whether or not uh, you're running your Arduino code on a Galileo. Uh, the Galileo templates will define for you, if we have a look at the properties, you can see in the C++ properties for the preprocessor, we'll define a, a Win32 preprocessor directive or definition. So I can say, okay, if that exists, then go and do the uh, Windows on Galileo work. If it doesn't, then assume this is just on a standard Arduino if I wanted to use this code again. That was pretty much the, uh, the only change. I had uh, one more, and we can see that if we have a look at the diff here, you can see there's really not many changes to the, the file at all. There's just where I added the Win32 support. And I also had to deal with the fact that uh, uh, when I'm running this, when I'm compiling this, uh, this code here, the, these declarations, progmem and so on, come from a .c file. And so what I'm expecting, because the uh, ST7565 file is a C++ project and the C++ project is set, that uh, this thing will be have its name mangled. And so in the extern, I had to add C to direct the, uh, the compiler linker not to expect name mangling. And they were the changes that I had to make there. So now I could compile the, C, the, the CPP file, but I then had to go and fix up the header a little bit. And in the header, it was a similar sort of thing. You can see here that I had to deal with a few things that weren't defined uh, or needed to be defined differently. Uh, the first was this uh, definition for progmem, some uh, uh, definitions around type and create different uh, types of those. And then I needed to go in and fix up these two usages here because they are uh, implemented in uh, headers for the AVR. And if we have a look at the first one, which is BV, we can jump over and have a look at BV. And it's a bit manipulation. And basically, here is the definition of the code for it. So I just copied that, went back into Visual Studio, added that definition in. And the next thing I had to do was deal with underscore delay underscore MS. Now, this is actually a function. And if we go over and have a look at the AVR documentation, you can see that what this function does is actually just creates a busy loop to delay for a certain period of time. Now, again, we don't have that in the wiring for Galileo. And so... I read the, the documentation and I looked into it, and as far as I can tell, uh, all that we really need is an actual delay. So I'm not really sure whether there's any specific reason they had to use underscore delay MS versus the standard Arduino call for delay, or the standard wiring call for delay, but I was able to make that change, and as you'll see shortly, the uh, code worked successfully. And that was all the changes that I needed to make in the header file. Again, you can see them here if we look at a compare, that basically I added that, and now I have the ST7565 CPP and the header, the associated header file 
working on the Galileo. The last thing I needed to do was to just update the font, the GLDC font.c file. And I had to do that again because of the AVR information. And I took that Win32 route again. This is defined in the project properties. So I know it will exist when I'm trying to compile this. And I can go in and add uh, the standard int header. And I can define out the, the progmem uh, information, which we don't need. Uh, I probably could have got rid of some of these uh, other ones down here, but I just cut and pasted the if defined else from the uh, the C file and if the CPP file. And if we go over here and have a look at the compare again, you can see that uh, that's the only change I made. So in terms of actually bringing that code from an Arduino over to uh, a, the Windows on Galileo, the code modifications were very small and very very easy for me to make. So now that I have that uh, done, I can build the application and uh, run it. So let's do a build, and you'll see it succeeded. And now I can do a remote deploy. So now I can uh, go click on uh, my remote uh, debugger, and we will deploy the app. So I just need to log in. And if we come over and have a look at the device, we can see that it started to uh, show the splash screen. It will draw the rectangles. It will draw some circles. Overall, it was fairly easy to integrate this into the Garage Door project and to take that existing uh, Arduino library and just move it straight over to the Galileo on Windows. I hope you uh, find this interesting and uh, tune in again to see the next thing that I'll be uh, implementing with the Garage Door Project.